Hello and thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. This is Joy. Welcome to another video. I truly do appreciate your time. I hope that your week is off to a great start. Today I want to talk to you about narcissistic abuse and I want to talk about one of the narcissist's tools in their little toy box and this is mirroring and we're going to discuss how demonic this mirroring is. You know, when two people meet up and they start the process of getting to know each other, it's exciting and learning about another person's likes, dislikes, the experiences that shaped them can be a very beautiful thing and also very rewarding as long as this person is not a narcissist. You know, everything that the narcissist breathes on, they destroy. And we cannot forget that this is their assignment. It was handed down to them by their father to steal, kill, and destroy. And guess what? They are very proud of the position that they hold in the devil's army and are actually competitive within the army. They're always trying to do the most harm so that they can get that demonic promotion. This demonic promotion shifts their ranking in the devil's army and makes them eligible for higher levels of supply. I want to point something out to you. I've said it before in some videos that, you know, oftentimes people will say the devil is chasing me, which is, which is kind of incorrect. The devil, if we go through the Bible, and this is a biblical perspective, if we go through the Bible, there are only three instances, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken, should I say, there are only three instances where the devil actually pursues somebody. Adam and Eve consider their ranking when it comes to mankind. Job consider his ranking and the favor that was on his life. And then Jesus Christ in the wilderness, consider his ranking three times where the devil is mentioned pursuing somebody. And I want you to, I want, I, I don't think I could ever say that enough because it's important that you understand that no, the devil is not, he's not omnipresent. He cannot be everywhere. He has to employ these minions and like every army on in every country on earth, there are ranks. Now, I, I don't have a military background, so I can't go through those ranks with you. But if you have the ranks, then you can talk to us about them in the comments. They're ranks. They're the lower, the, you know, that you have your lower ones and it goes up right up to the tops, the, you know, the higher ups. I don't even know what to call them, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. They are different types of ranks and these demonic spirits fight and they do what they have to do. They take as many hostages. They take as many um, prisoners of war. They, you know, they, they want to do as much collateral damage. They want to do as much harm so that they can get these promotions. The truth about it is when we look at the spirits that actually come to attack us, they're so low level that, you know, that honestly, when we get our mind right, we're able to overcome them each and every single time, each and every single time. I want to draw your attention to Acts 19 and 15, and this is a King James version. And it says, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know, but who are you? This also refers to knowing people in the spiritual realm as well as ranking. But what does all this have to do with mirroring and what makes mirroring so demonic? It's about getting that higher narcissistic supply. That is what the narcissist wants. And so in order for them 
to go up the ladder, to rise in ranking, they must mirror you. And it's important that they master this stage. This is why narcissists are so intentional about listening to you, about asking you questions, about being fully engaged in everything that pertains to you, your life, your history, your family, your children. They have to know everything so that they can feed you, you. But above all that, feeding you you is just one part. It's being able to siphon your soul. Because as you speak, your eyes light up. As you laugh, they learn something about the way your mouth moves. They, they watch how you walk, how you talk. They're, they're watching you because they have to mirror you so that they can level up and leveling up simply means so that they can go up in ranking or so that they can use whatever you put out there as your you know as parts of your soul that they want to siphon so that they can get that forever supply so that they can have different people to have sex with so that they can have people certain people that they will reproduce with there's a different reward structure for every goal that the narcissist accomplishes and this is why narcissists, psychopaths, and sociopaths continually work at perfecting their predatory nature. They never stop. They always have to find ways to be more demonic. Wow, that's a shame. And this is why these minions work in tandem. You know, the Leviathan spirit, the Jezebel, they are the strong men. And they, you know, they're the strong men that are at work. But don't, you know, I think sometimes, you know, we put a lot of focus on them. And I think, yes, it's right that we do. But it is not that that is what is always the driving force behind. Because the strong man has tentacles that are at work. And if we take the, if we take the whole ranking stru structure, that means that not every demon is a Leviathan. Not every demon is a Python. Not every demon is a Jezebel. Some of these demons that we encounter are nothing but low-level spirits. Some of them merely operate, and this is an example like, let's say, as a familiar spirit. Think about narcissistic parents, familiar spirits, household spirits, so that they will prepare the child or consider um, They'll prepare the child for the next narcissist that they would encounter so that they would prepare the child for the sociopath, the psychopath that would come into their lives to wreak havoc. Consider the gossip that is at work, at church, the gym, that is a monitoring spirit always responsible for the transmission of information within, their, within the kingdom of darkness. They have assignments. And so if they start off at one particular level, depending on how effective Effective, they are able to siphon your soul and then use that to get additional sources of soul I mean of souls or of narcissistic supply they are elevated within that kingdom this is why you find that when narcissists lose a super empath they tend to disappear they tend to collapse they go into hibernation because listen there's punishment when they let go of what is good narcissists you know they will get they get you know that ego of theirs that spirit of pride i mean it gets them each and every single time so when they feel like you know what i'm the man i'm the woman i'm you know i'm i'm bad i'm you know i've got this they always fall because of that pride and they get put into timeout because of that this is when psychology wants to tell us that we need to have bulletproof boundaries. And I'm all about boundaries. I believe that we have to have boundaries. But beyond having boundaries, you have to have discernment. You need to know who is right for you. The truth is, these minions really don't have any power for you. But them not having any power over you? is not the end of it you know um 
A demonic transference takes place when the narcissist monitors every, um, monitors every single thing about you. So like the sound of your voice, the light in your eyes, um, when they listen to what you have to say, um, what you feel like, what you taste like. And when I say feel like, when they touch you, what you taste like, what your preferences are, these are all the five senses, touch, taste, smell, hearing, and seeing. This is what the enemy will use as his mission of destruction to get in our lives these become open open um, these become portals doorways but it also it also pulls on the carnal nature of the targets your discernment is what will save you each and every single time when it comes to dealing with these creatures it is your discernment you see while the the narcissist transforms into an angel of light at this stage to impress you and they and we tend to see or like the targets tend to see all good that the narcissist projects from their soul bank within that empty shell of theirs they they project what is all good and and you know targets become impressed by qualities experiences languages or you know language um, information gestures that they have siphoned from other people nothing about a narcissist is original nothing their experiences none of those are original hardly any of them belong to them if you think about um, your own experience with a narcissist and how they've taken your own stories your own adventures you know when you've told them about things that you encountered and you experienced and then they go off and use that as their own that's what you know that's what they get people with that's what they hook people with um, do you ever wonder do you ever wonder um, how narcissists are able to recall events that happened a long time ago you know they'll ask you like hey babe do you remember and they'll mention something and you're like no not really and then they start telling you about it and then you're like oh oh yeah by the way yes why do you think they're able to remember like that? Some of, you know, and I mean, like they're able to store a lot of information because these demons work in tandem with each other, monitoring spirits, gathering a, a information and then processing it at the right time. There is nothing about boundaries that will save you. Boundaries are good. Don't get me wrong. But your boundaries are helpful in a relationship with people who we can actually do life with, to people who will be productive to us, to people who will help us, to people who we can partner in life with. When it comes to these demonic creatures that mirror you to take advantage of you so that they can actually exploit you, it's not a boundary that's going to save you. It is having discernment. It's having discernment that will tell you that this person does not belong in your life at all. And you must expel them from your lives. You know, it, it is discernment that will tell you that this person does not deserve a seat at, the t at your table, period. You and evil have nothing in common. Light and darkness have nothing in common. You are called the light of the earth. They represent the kingdom of darkness. What is there in common here? What do you need a boundary between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness? No boundary is required. It is discernment that saves you each and every time. And where does your discernment come from? Your discernment is not going to come from me. It is not going to come from, it's, it's going to come from the Lord, period. That's where discernment is going to come from. So continue to develop your relationship with God. Absolutely, if you need to, and I encourage you to anyway, go to therapy, counseling, find somebody to talk to, to help guide you to give you the tools that you need to conquer narcissistic abuse. However, let's not leave God out of this process. He is the creator of all things. He is the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He knows your most inner parts. 
He is the one who will help you develop discernment. He will teach you how to listen and hear his voice. His word says that my sheep know my voice. They will not listen to the voice of another. So if you know his voice, that's where your discernment lies. You, you build your discernment, you grow your discernment, you become stronger in discernment when you spend time in the word, when you spend time praying, when you spend time listening to him, just being quiet, listening to him, getting to know his voice. Many of you have listened to me over an extended period of time. So when you hear my voice and you don't see my face, you're like, oh, that's joy. Get to know God like that but get to know him even more than that because he is the one that can save you, not me. He is the one that can save you. He will teach you how to battle. He will teach you how to war. He created you for a purpose and in purpose. And that purpose that he has placed on the inside of you is so valuable to him that he must see it happen. He must see it come to pass. So yes, he will do whatever he has to do to teach you, to show you who you are, how valuable you are, how unique you are, and how much mankind needs you. He will do everything to protect you but you have to trust him you have to take that step and ask him to teach you ask him to show you spend time in praise and worship develop a routine a pattern with him i want to thank you so much for your time today i truly do appreciate the time that you take to listen to me and it's my sincere hope that what i share with you helps helps you on your journey of recovery but beyond that I, it's my it's my it's my hope that it will point you to your lord and savior because i know that if he was able to touch me if he was able to breathe on the coals of my heart if he was able to redirect my focus i'm not special i'm just me he can do it for you and i want to see him do it for you and so I'm just thankful for your time and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. So until the next video, be good to yourself.